is a single pane of glass over for managed service providers. We'll discuss this topic on today's MSP Zone. You're entering the MSP Zone, a podcast for the managed services community, covering news, analysis, and interviews from around the globe. Elevate your MSP game by staying in the MSP Zone. And now, your host, Charles Weaver. Is the single pane of glass done? Has it passed its prime? Are MSPs no longer looking for a single pane of glass? These are all questions I've been asking myself. And honestly, I've been asking MSPs about these uh, topics because it's coming up more and more in my conversations. And um, I just find it very curious that MSPs who for many years have had a, you know, a desire to consolidate their uh, working platform tools, uh, to, to aggregate, consolidate the data, the uh, information that they need in order to do their jobs uh, as MSPs. Um, I, 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 I'm not going to say that this is happening, but I'm going to say it could be happening. I think that there's a possibility that it's happening and uh, I have a suspicion as to why it may be happening, if it is happening. So we're going to uh, unpack all of this and tell you what it means or what we think it means and uh, get you some answers or, and, and some perspective. So first of all, what do we mean by single pane of glass? Uh, you know, For those of you who are new to the MSP community, new to the managed services profession, a uh, single pane of glass. What is it? Is it a window? Is it an operating system? No. Okay. Um, the simplest way I can put it is the single pane of glass concept started uh, many, many, many years ago when disparate, distinct software technologies, mostly around the monitoring and management functions for MSPs, started to be aggregate, uh, aggregated uh, into a common window where the MSP would be able to look at a board and see everything that they would really need to, to understand what is going on with a not just one customer, but a group of managed customers, right? And put yourself, uh, now for those of you who are uh, under a certain age, I'm not going to call out any any numbers here, but for those of you who are kind of on the younger side, shall we say, and you have never set foot into an actual a physical knock before, uh, you may not know what this means. You may have seen pictures on the internet. You may have you know heard about you know tales from your your elder uh, peers out there, but the this was very common uh, in the traditional MSP knock um, setups where you would have a big screen right inside the physical knock inside the physical room where the technicians, the help desk, the, uh, the engineers, what have you, were in there doing their work, and they would have, you know, big, big monitors to see, you know, uh, up, down uh, kind of status, you know, kind of the basic green light, yellow light, red light um, status for customers, uh, for objects that they were managing. They could maybe see uh, a screen where they could look at tickets, open tickets that had to be uh, worked uh, and, and resolved, and a variety of other types of uh, data collected through the agents or the, the software that they had deployed. And, and that is the concept of a single pane of glass, right? It's, it's, it's a concept of pulling together all the actionable, useful information that an MSP needs to do their work. And yes, if you need to drill down and get deeper, you do that. It's not, you don't do all of your work 100% of the time in this single pane of glass, but it's a starting off point, right? It's a, it's a, this is where you live and breathe and it's always up. It's always available to you to look at as a team. Well, so hopefully that makes sense for those of you. Um, and for those of you who are, you know, maybe a, a bit younger, never been inside an actual knock or have only really worked for an MSP where you had a virtual knock, the concepts should still be roughly the same. Although your work practices may vary depending on the tools you use and the manner of which you, you do your work. 
and, and the MSP you work for. But the single pane of glass concept still has relevancy today. Uh, even if you're in a virtual knock environment, you still have a, a benefit to seeing all of the information that is relevant to you doing your work tickets, monitoring alerts, uh, threat attack vectors, you know, uh, up, up, down status, uh, things like that. And so it hasn't really gone away, but we are starting to hear whispers and grumblings and discussions and comments from MSPs who are saying, you know what? I'm not sure if single pane of glass is still relevant for me because there may be too much uh, cost associated with it. And what do they mean when they say cost? Well, I'll tell you a little bit of what I think they're talking about. When the single pane of glass concept comes up in a conversation today, it almost always is involving a add-on service that a MSP platform wants to sell to a customer, to an MSP that is, and the MSP is saying, um, what payment options do we have? You know, what's the contract terms? Are there minimum requirements? You know, minimum spends, things like that. And we're, we're hearing a lot of MSPs who are saying, look, I'm being squeezed by, by my vendor and I'm, I'm actually looking, it's, it's, it's bad enough that I'm actually looking at breaking up, I'm using the term now, breaking up that single pane of glass and going into a, a kind of a, a new model where I'm using just, best way I can think of it, describe it is called a best of breed approach where we're picking and choosing not from one vendor company, but from disparate vendor organizations, the best product that they have to offer in a particular product category. So for example, if you were looking at um, uh, adding uh, or changing a, um, let's say you want to buy a, a ticketing platform. Well, you might go to the best vendor that has a ticketing platform. Now, all the ticketing platforms happen to also have RMM software. They all, almost all have backup software. So they're naturally going to say, hey, now that you bought the ticketing from us, wouldn't you like to buy all this other stuff from us? Makes sense, right? fits into this whole single pane of glass concept. Well, those MSPs now are saying, well, you have the best ticketing platform, ticketing technology, but I like the RMM functionality of this vendor over here. So I'm going to go over here to buy theirs. And <clears throat> this guy over here has really good backup. And this guy over here who has uh, security, you know, SIM, SOC as a service, I like their stuff better than yours. And so MSPs are starting to look at the benefits of single pane of glass and also now looking at, well, is there a downside to single pane of glass competing with best of breed? And I think that we're seeing best of breed starting to emerge as a viable option. Does this mean that the single pane of glass is going to go away? No. Does it mean that the MSP platforms are going to stop aggregating, developing, buying new technologies in order to consolidate the market? No, it doesn't. Does it mean that you should start splitting up all of your technologies to get it out of you know, one particular vendor? That's up to you. Uh, that's a risk question, honestly. Um, and, and a serious one. I, I don't want to belittle that. Uh, it's a serious risk question, um, but one that you and every MSP has to address and it has to ask themselves. But the conversations that I'm hearing today, the MSPs that I'm talking to are definitely saying, we're getting to the breaking point here of where vendors are pushing and pushing and pushing for new technologies. And it, it almost always ends up being around security, right? Because these are existing MSPs. They're fairly mature. They spend a lot of money with their MSP platform companies. So it's not like they're, you know, they're, they're newbies or they're, they're new startups. These are existing, you know, kind of veteran MSP shops and they're wanting to expand, and the terms that they're being presented 
from their MSP platform companies are not agreeable. So if you're an MSP platform company and you're listening to this, pay attention. Because I think this is a v- bigger than we may all realize. That If you hear it from one MSP, that's that's something. But if you start to hearing it from everybody you're talking to, it's a trend. And if it's a trend and it's happening to not just one but multiple platforms, then it's probably happening to all of them. And so it's something that we need to address as a community. So uh, how do we address this? Well... The whole title of this is is single pane of glass over for MSPs. I don't think it is, and I, I brought this up to an MSP, um, the other day last week, and and he said, well, it's not really single pane of glass being over. In fact, he says that we're we're starting to create our own pane of glass through different tools that have nothing to do with the big four platform vendors. We create our own single pane of glass, which also allows us to kind of you know follow a best of breed technology approach and that's the way he presented it to me now yeah i'm not sure if that's common i'm not sure if that's what most msps are doing um because he also uh, this msp also said well there's other other msps who are clearly drinking the kool-aid and they like buying everything from one vendor it's just easier for them and you know i can see that and i certainly acknowledge that it's true and all four of the big vendors have their kind of uh, followers and, and people who really like what they're doing, and I'm fine with that. Um, but I I do think that we need to acknowledge reality, and I and I certainly am hearing from those people who are saying, while I may like doing business with a particular platform vendor, I also have a limit, and I'm hearing more and more MSPs saying, you know what, I'm reaching my limit. And my vendor is pushing me to the point where I'm not going to be pushed anymore. And if it means that I have to break up the, the, the good thing I've got going and I've got to transition off of a handful of tools in order to go and, and get the best deal, I, I think that that is a, an increasing reality for a lot of MSPs out there. Will it become a massive trend? Who knows? Uh, I'm just telling you what I'm hearing out there. Um, Another element of this, which is important, is, is not just the pricing and the sales, the upsell um, moment, the inflection point when an MSP wants to buy new technology from their existing platform vendor and they're getting you know, it's kind of squeezed with, with unfavorable terms. We're, we're also hearing, and this one particular MSP said, you know what, I've, I've, I've tried this new platform, this new tool that my my vendor sold me. And you know what? They've missed a couple things. It's not working. So why should I, you know, get held over a barrel with, you know, bad terms, you know, minimum requirement, you know, monthly spends and all that type of thing, you know, minimum one year commitment, and then have them actually start to miss stuff. And particularly they're, they're talking about missing stuff on the security side. And I, I can see that point where you'd, you'd be kind of ticked off if you were an MSP spending a premium, uh, having you know uh, uncomfortable conversations with your sales reps, and then the technology you just bought doesn't work 100% of the time. Um, yeah, I, 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 I could see why you'd be angry. Um, and I think that MSPs are going to probably start to hold their platform vendors more accountable for performance in general, not just general performance. I'm talking specifically even security performance. And, you know, I'm not talking about litigation. I'm just talking about, hey, if, if your stuff doesn't work and you think that you're the only technology or the only SIM or SOC as a service platform out there, you know, th- that's not true. I mean, there's a lot of options for MSPs these days. And so I, I think that this predatory kind of behavior that we're, we're hearing from, from the MSPs, uh, you know, it, it's kind of uh, at, the, at one point shocking to hear, but at the other side of it, I'm, I'm like, why do they think that they have to behave this way when there's so much choice, when there's so many different good options out there from, from different platforms? And, and I'm not talking about security only. I'm talking ticketing, RMM, backup, documentation, password management, um, 
MFA. I mean, you go down the list and there's like really, really good options and good tech out there across the board for enterprise, mid-market, and SMB alike. And that's one of the, you know, the, the beautiful things about it, being in this market segment, you know, now is, is seeing so much choice. Um, I, I just think that we're going to get to a point really quickly where, you know, I, I would like to see the big four become more competitive, um, not with each other, but, f- but f- for MSPs and, and not really look at trying to lock up MSPs because I don't think that's going to be a game plan that really works long term. Um, I think it's going to backfire. I think it is backfiring. I mean, if if we're getting wind and having conversations with MSPs saying that that they don't like this behavior, uh, guys, you better listen. You better pay attention. It's not doing you any favors. You're not going to sell more licenses if you keep this up. Um, he, heed my warning. You know, I, I, I can only report what, what I hear and what I'm hearing is fairly consistent and it's increasing in, in tone and, and the types of MSPs. It's just very, very common behavior. Um, and, you know, it, it's happened before. Um, you go through periods of this over the last, you know, 20 years. Um, so it's not new. I'm sure it will happen again in the future. But it doesn't mean that we can't call it out and it doesn't mean that we can't be aware of it and it doesn't mean that the MSPs can't... Um, be uh, advised of it and and act accordingly. And I think that they have some very good options to uh, to respond to this type of predatory behavior. So um, is the single pane of glass over for MSPs? No, I don't think so. Um, whether it comes from the from a single platform vendor or not, I think that those days are over. I think you're going to start to see technologies that come out that allow the MSP to build their own single pane of glass across a a non-homogenous uh, best of breed uh, suite of tools. I think that that's going to be the new um, name of the game, right? Interoperability that is that is both interoperable and best of breed, meaning it doesn't have to come from a single vendor in order to operate optimally. Um, that's kind of what I suspect is going to happen. That's what I'm hearing from some MSPs who are saying like, you know, they, they don't really have us over a barrel head like they think they do. We're actually able to go out and, and replicate this tech, replicate the single pane of glass, and, and get the best of breed tools we want. Uh, that, I think, is, is a optimal outcome. And, yeah, those are my thoughts on that. I'd be curious to hear what you guys are are thinking. Um, I aware th- I'm aware this is a somewhat sensitive issue, so I will never betray confidences. If you guys want to shoot an email over MSPZone at MSPAlliance.com. If you've got a, a story you want to share, if you want me to just, you want to write something up and, and I can relay it to people without n- naming who you are, um, I'm, a, I'm happy to do that. If you want to c- call in, um, you want to call me and, and tell me, you know, something that you, you're witnessing, lo- love to hear from you. But Um, I think it's good that we all talk about this type of issue, um, not just to call out bad behavior, but to improve the the behavior, to make it better because, you know, we're all in this together and the, the, the MSP platform vendors do really good work for for the most part. I mean, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're the lifeblood of this, of this industry, right. In many ways, because they create the technology that the, that you, the MSPs use. And so it's, it's very symbiotic, um, you can't cut one out without the other, right? Uh, very much inter- intertwined, our fates are. So um, I say this with the the hope that we can work through these uh, kind of problem times and get to better uh, better relations between software company and MSP. And ultimately, when that happens, um, the the customer wins, and that's you know that's what the name of the game is for everybody. Those are my thoughts. Um, happy to hear your comments uh, again by email, by phone. Let us know. Um, and until next time, this is Charles Weaver with the MSP Zone. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed today's episode, please give us a like. Make sure you are subscribed to the podcast so you will get notified when future episodes are released. We will see you next time in the MSP Zone. MSP Zone.